Neil Gaiman is one of the few authors with doesn't think that he's above doing things for kids, um, was actually, um, as, uh, and he has done, many of his books have been illustrated as graphic novels. Uh, so I knew that he had, because he himself uh, talks about having grown up uh, reading voraciously, escaping in books, being an avid reader, and when he was, um, about 11 years old, he was called into the principal's office and he was told to get rid of his collection of comics. And he said, but why to the principal? And the principal explains, it's like, oh, because they will keep you from reading good books, real, lit real literature. He said, but look, in the entire school, I am the one who has the biggest collection of comics, bar none, and I'm also the most voracious reader. I have read every book in your library. One doesn't imply the other, and he didn't win that battle, but now he is a good advocate for visual literacy and comics for kids and how they can obviously, as uh, Art Spiegelman says, uh, be a gateway drug for literature. and. When I showed him the drawings that had been done by Lorenzo Matotti for Hansel and Gretel, they were a suite of drawings that uh, Matotti had done for an opera of Hansel and Gretel that was going to be staged at the Metropolitan Opera, and I published that in The New Yorker. I wanted to do it as a book, and that's a good example of knowing that if I just made those images in a book, I would be told, oh, but this is too dark for children. Um, and in a way, they're very abstract and they're very evocative. Um, you actually, uh, in some way, almost don't see uh, much of anything except um, a big area of black. And then as you spend more time with it, you start seeing the characters and it's very evocative, it's very abstract, it's um, it's visual literature at its best. It's also not um, it's also minimalist. It it doesn't give you uh, a full color rendition of a scene. It's uh, just a few brush lines. And this is where the interactive collaborative process is shown at its best. When, um, I'm at this point we're friends with Neil Gaiman, so when he was over, um, I showed him this work and I asked him to uh, do uh, his own version of the story. And he says that all of his life he had been waiting for somebody to ask him. Uh, to retail Hansel and Gretel because he had heard it. He remembers hearing it when he was a child, when he was four or five years old, as a radio uh, story that he heard over the radio. And for him, it was revelatory, the idea that you could be abandoned in the forest by your parents. It's like, parents can do this. And that somehow a witch wanted to eat you. He said, like, I actually looked at my arms, I looked at my legs, I'm like, oh my God, I'm meat. I could actually be eaten by someone. And it stayed with him, but that, that fear that he mastered and he conquered through listening to the story again, through reading it again, that made him want to investigate it in his retelling. And now we are actually, the reaction has been phenomenally positive. Um, he was uh, saying the other day, it's like, all your, li all your life you write and you hope for a review and then, then you hope for a good review. And he got that uh, review and the fact that it would be for an illustrated version of Hansel and Gretel is quite ironic. But it is the kind of reviews that you just can't only dream up in the New York Times. Um, we will continue to collaborate. He's actually, uh, we were just sitting down at a celebratory dinner. Um, very happy that um, the book is received so well and started talking with Lorenzo Matodi and there's some other story of like, oh, that story stayed with it. Oh, yes, me too. And off they were into like the next stories they want to tell together.